Russian President Vladimir Putin is accusing a group of Ukrainian saboteurs of attacking civilians on Thursday. The Kremlin says Ukrainian assailants opened fire on a car in the border village of Lubichanya, and that is in western Russia. Two men were reportedly killed, and a 10-year-old boy was injured as a result. Ukraine denies this claim, saying that Russia staged the attack as, quote, deliberate provocation. For more on this, we are joined now by former National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley. He's got a new book, Handoff, the Foreign Policy George W. Bush Passed to Barack Obama, and it's out right now. Uh, let me ask you this first. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for joining us, and good morning. Not here. Thanks for having me. So I want to ask you, though, there is a, a competing narrative here, a false flag for Russia, something that they drummed up in order to, uh, you know, sort of drum up some antipathy toward Ukraine. Uh, and the, on the other side of things, you have uh, the potential that Ukraine is penetrating into Russia and uh, doing somewhat of offensive uh, maneuvers here. What do you think is more likely? It's not clear at this point. The facts are still a little bit murky. And the question when we say Ukraine, it may be some kind of sort of paramilitary group uh, with Ukraine. We don't know whether it's acting with approval of the Ukrainian government or not. But I think the bottom line is this kind of thing, uh, either as a false flag operation from the Russians or some elements from Ukraine actually crossing the border, plays right into Putin's narrative. Putin's narrative is that this is a defensive war he's waging, that Ukraine is the aggressor, that Ukraine is an instrument of the United States and the West and is seeking to break up Russia. That's the narrative Putin wants and is using to drum up support within Russia for this military operation or this war he's raging on, U waging on Ukraine. So the problem with this is it plays right into Putin's hand, right into Putin's narrative, and it provokes folks on the political right to argue that Putin should be doing even, acting even more aggressively against Ukraine, which in some sense gives him cover to do so. Wow, so whether it is Ukraine officially, Ukraine unofficially, or Russia doing this to itself, he benefits from that. Uh, again, we told, we told uh, the yeah. viewers about uh, the handoff, the 30 transition memos from Bush to Obama. And I'm curious as to how foreign policy and the United States relationship with Russia has changed since you were working with the Bush administration. Well, one of the things, if you read the transition memo on Russia that's in the book, you see that the Russia that the Bush administration faced is very different from the Russia we face today. Uh, that Russia, that Putin, was interested in integrating into the international system rather than opposing it, wanted a constructive relationship with the United States. And we did a lot of uh, useful work with Russia, cooperated with Russia on counterterrorism, counterproliferation, on arms control. We actually had each major cabinet minister of the United States have a joint project with their opposite number in the Russian government. And the, those joint projects were reported on to the two presidents jointly every quarter. I mean, it was a level of cooperation that's almost impossible to imagine now. But it fell away, and it fell away for really two reasons. One, initially, Putin seemed to be interested in moving to the West, building a more democratic Russia, but over time he became more and more authoritarian. And secondly, the other thing that I think alienated him were the so-called color revolutions, the popular uprisings in Georgia, Ukraine, and the Kyrgyzstan in 2003 to 2005, which we thought were building prosperous, stable democratic states that would be good neighbors for Russia, but which Putin saw as efforts to establish anti-Russian regimes under the auspices, really, or the initiative of the CIA as a dress rehearsal for destabilizing Russia itself. And at that point, we really lost Putin, and that was uh, ratified in some sense when he goes into Georgia in 2008. So he lost any trust in us, and uh, the relationship has not been rebuilt. Stephen Hadley, Nat, former National Security Advisor, yep. thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.